Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see today, I am not in my home library. I am actually in the very famous, very well-known Stanley Hotel. If you've never heard of the Stanley Hotel, you might know it better as the Overlook Hotel, as this is the hotel that Stephen King stayed in, which basically inspired the entirety of The Shining, and therefore also Dr. Sleep. When he was staying here, he stayed in room 217, which is supposed to be one of the most haunted rooms in the entire building, and one of the most haunted hotel rooms um, ever. I am currently not in 217, I'm currently in room 426 on the fourth floor, which unfortunately for me is the most haunted floor of the Stanley Hotel, and we are next door to room 428, which is probably the second most haunted room in all of the Stanley Hotel. So I'm here today though, not to talk about the Stanley. I just thought it'd be really, really cool and fun to film here since I just finished up another book on my August TBR and that is Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. This book released um, just a few weeks ago. It's a very, very brief read, just under 400 pages long. I did receive this in my most recent Nightworms package, the August 2021 box, and it is the latest release from Ronald Malfi. So I'm going to read the back of the book for you guys very quickly before I go into my full dissection. So it says, Aaron Decker's life changes on one December morning when his wife Allison is killed. Haunted by her absence and her ghost, Aaron goes through her belongings where he finds a receipt for a motel room in another part of the country. Piloted by grief and an increasing sense of curiosity, Aaron embarks on a journey to discover what Allison had been doing in the weeks prior to her death. Yet Aaron is unprepared to discover the dark secrets Allison kept, the death and horror that make up the tapestry of her hidden life. And with each dark secret revealed, Aaron becomes more and more consumed by his obsession to learn the terrifying truth about the woman who had been his wife, even if it puts his own life at risk. So I really like the back summary of this book because I feel like it actually doesn't tell you anything about this book. And I think this is one of the best books I have ever read to go in blind with. Um, I will say that this book is part ghost story, it's part crime thriller, it has a very, very, very heavy gothic undertone. Um, though it is not a slow burn, it is a very fast paced read and will keep you on the edge of your seat, but there is a lot of um, like gothic subtleties. And part of the charm of the gothic subtleties is that a lot of the almost hauntings that you're reading about, you are kind of filling the blanks with your own imagination and your own mind and trying to draw your own conclusions. However, unlike a gothic novel, or at least a traditional gothic novel, you will get all of the answers to what is actually happening and all of like the kind of um, subtle hauntings and moments. This is another book where every single thing that is said in this book means something, even if it seems frivolous when you first read it, it will come back later, come back to haunt you. Um, and I just found this absolutely brilliant. From the very first sentence, I was so hooked into this book. As you guys know, I'm a huge, huge, huge Ronald Malfi fan, December Park being one of my favorite novels of all time, um, and definitely my favorite Ronald Malfi book. But this is a five-star read for me, and this pretty much is competing right now with December Park. I do still think December Park is better, but that's because I love coming-of-age horror. But this book really did grip me from the very, very first sentence. So I'm actually going to read the first paragraph for you guys because I found it really, really beautiful. And I think it sets the tone for the entire story without giving anything away. So it starts off. Every marriage has its secrets. I understand this, Allison. I get it. Secrets are what allow us to cling to our individual selves while also being one half of a matrimonial whole and can be as vital as breathing. Fleeting desires, errant daydreams, private things reserved for just one person, the keeper of those secrets, the attendant at the door of the vault. The small secrets are easy to keep hidden, easier, say, than the big secrets, the whoppers, the infidelities and closet addictions that, like some underwater beastie that must ultimately ascend to the surface for a gasp of air, don't remain secrets forever. I love this. Um, and looking back on these opening lines after having finished the book, there is so much foreshadowing in these that really only makes sense once you finish the book. I don't think like knowing there's foreshadowing in the beginning of this novel is going to ruin anything for you. But I do think it's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. I really, really love um, Malfi's depiction of ghosts. One of my favorite things about Ronald Malfi's writing is that he takes very, very cliche creatures and horrors and makes them very, very unique. 
He did that in Snow with his different variation on zombies. He did that in the Narrows with his uh, spin on vampires. And this is 110% his own personal spin on Ghost. Um, but this is, I don't even know if I would call it like a forefront ghost story. Yes, there is definitely some haunting in here. And yes, there is something very supernatural in here. But it is definitely more of a mystery novel. Um, has a lot of tones of like a thriller or a crime drama without feeling like a kind of cheesy detective story. But I really, really, really loved it. And it's really difficult to talk about because I really don't want to give anything away. But I will say um, the best part of this book are the last 10 pages. And it's, it's funny because I was trying to finish this book while I was staying here and we had dinner reservations. So I couldn't read the last 10 pages. And when I got back, like, I kind of always think, oh, like, things are just being wrapped up at the very, very end, right? You can kind of breeze through the last couple pages of a novel once all of the big reveals and stories have come to a close. This one you can't do that with. The last 10 pages of this book are by far the best. They're the most important. Um, this book, I get, I get wary with um, endings of novels a lot. I find that I will determine my rating system based on how a book is concluded. A lot of times it can elevate a four-star read to a five-star read or it can take a five-star read down to a four-star read. This book was pretty much on track to be a five-star read from the very beginning, but this ending just blew it out of the water. It was so well done. I didn't see it coming. I think it fit the whole narrative and the tone perfectly, and I, I absolutely loved it. I'm so happy I didn't know anything about this book going into it, apart from this little back synopsis, which really doesn't tell you much. Um, and I do think it's done very, very well. Um, there's definitely, I don't really want to get into it, but there's definitely some um, social commentary going on in this novel that I think is handled very, very well. Again, dealing with um, like mental illness and how we portray it and perceive it and the good and bad side of it. And I think Malfi does a very, very good job, especially talking about something in this novel that is a very hot topic in today's both politics and like society in general. And I think he handles it very beautifully. And I definitely recommend reading the afterword of this novel. This novel becomes, this novel takes on a life of its own once you read the afterword and you understand where uh, Malfi's inspiration came from for this. And I think that actually gives the book way, way, way more meaning. So yes, definite five, five star read from me. Um, you can tell I loved it because I'm literally on vacation in one of the coolest, creepiest places ever, and I still wanted to read this book. That is how absolutely amazing this novel was. So yes, that is all that I have to say on Come With Me Today. Oh, before I forget, this awesome Victorian nightgown is inspired by Guillermo del Toro's film Crimson Peak and was designed by Blackwood Castle. They're an amazing, um, kind of like gothic victorian era style clothing brand female run they're awesome i will link them down below and yeah that is all that i have for you guys today again from the stanley hotel here in estes parks colorado as always if you enjoy these videos please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below i post every monday and thursday and i'll catch you guys in the next one